Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. If you like what I do, please leave a review. Please subscribe to this podcast. And if you'd like to support this free service, which costs me quite a bit of money to provide, then please uh, go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. And the link is on my website. Now, a second ago, I said only listen when you can safely close your eyes. However, <laughs> I'm going to ask you this, to do something which revolves... Revolves? involves you having your eyes open. So you may need to pause the recording for a minute. Not right now, wait till I finish talking. Um, I'm going to ask you to get a hold of some kind of ball that you can hold in your hand, like a, you know, like a tennis ball. Or if you don't have a tennis ball, because I don't actually have a tennis ball, because I don't play tennis. Um, what I've done is rolled two socks together. Okay, so uh, I'll take my glasses off so I can actually see what I'm doing. So if you press pause to get, get hold of something like that, just something that you can hold in your hand and it's, it's comfortable. I say comfortable, it doesn't have to necessarily feel blissful. Just, you know, it fits in your hand. Not something that's too big for your hand or something that, <laughs> if it's so small, you can't actually see where it is. Just a nice size, couple of socks rolled together. Or a tennis ball. Or, you know, something similar. So press the pause button and then come back. Uh, when you're ready. Now I'm going to assume that you've, you're ready. So what we're going to do, basically this is an exercise and it's very, very simple. It has to be for me to do it. So I like simplicity. It's not my idea. Um, it's something I came across a few years ago. Um, but the idea behind it is that we're, when you're stressed, anxious, panicky, uh, tense, whatever is going on, one part of your brain is more stimulated than the other part. That's the, probably the most simplistic term I can give without going into the whole right hemisphere, left hemisphere, and therefore, in order to reduce the stress, you need to have both sides stimulated. Now there's a number of ways to do it. A number of ways, this is just one simple way. And you can do at home. Uh, another way would be to learn to play the piano. Or to play the piano, if you know how to play the piano. It's a little bit different. Because, well first of all you need to play, learn how to play the piano. Which is probably not... That wouldn't reduce my stress. <laughs> having to learn to play an instrument, you know, but playing the piano has a similar effect, but it's also a very distractive and focused thing. Playing the piano is very focused. And this is another focused thing, but different, just very different, but the process is basically activating both sides of your brain both hemispheres of your brain, the right and the left. 
So instead of just one being um, perhaps overly stimulated, let's say the right side of your brain, overstimulated with emotion, then you can even it out and start activating the other side. And the other side gets a little bit activated. And then you activate the right side again. And then you activate the left side again. And bit by bit, the other side gets more activated, but only takes the activation away from the other side. So it just disperses it. Does that make sense? Disperses the activation and the stimulation between both sides so that everything's more even, everything's more relaxed, and how it should be really, in a sense of feeling calm. I say should be, there is no should be really, but it definitely evens it out. It's a bit like if you think you're sitting on a seesaw. Do you remember seesaws? I don't know if they even have them in playgrounds anymore. But seesaws used to be, you'd sit on one side, your friend would sit on the other side, and you'd jump up, and you'd like push your legs up and down, and you'd seesaw up and down. It worked fine if you were someone the same size as you. And when you were a kid, most kids generally are kind of roughly the same. If you've got someone at eight, they're generally about the same weight, size-ish. I mean, some are a lot bigger, some are a bit smaller, but, but if you get an adult, and you're sort of five years old, and the adult sits on it, or a 14 year old sits on it, they have complete control over the seesaw. You don't have a say in it. You might as well not even be there because you can't do anything. They decide when it goes down, they decide when it goes up. But when you were someone the same weight as you, you push up and then they push up but neither of you has control of the seesaw it's a mutual exchange of energy it's fun you're playing with each other it's fun and you both got the same amount of um, leverage so that's kind of what this is doing this little exercise it takes away the power from one side. All that energy that's in one part of your brain, which is focusing on the stress and maybe causing that stress and that panic and the anxiety, it starts to, let's say, you, basically you've got a big person there and you've got a small person on the other side of the, G, of the seesaw. And the the other side has no control so the logic you know the logical part which says you know what there's nothing to be stressed about we don't need to be all you know hit up and uh, sweaty and stressy and anxiety we don't need this we don't have to be because everything's going to be okay but because all the weights on the other side of the seesaw or you could say the other side of the scales, if you look at it that way. So what we do is we even it out so that both sides of the seesaw have the same weight. Both sides of your brain have the same amount of stimulation and activity, which then evens it out gently. And then there's that stimulation you can just have it balanced, or it can go up and down. And it's, you know, our minds change all the time, it's standard stuff. But if you look at it from a scale perspective, the scales are then balanced. And in order to do this, if you look at the, the fact that the left side of your brain operates the right side of your body. The right side of your brain operates 
operates, operates or is in charge of the left side of your body. Which means when you, you, when you move the right side of your body, it stimulates the left side of your brain. When you move the left side of your body, did I say it? You, if you, I'm going to get it right in a minute. If you move the right side of your body, it stimulates the left side of your brain. If you move the left side of your body, it stimulates the right side of your brain. Because those are the two. So if you think of it like a cross, crossover. Which means when you move your right hand, your left leg, your toes, your shoulders, it stimulates the other side of the brain. So what we do, I mean, there's different ways you could do dancing. Dancing can reduce stress. That's why sometimes I think people go running. It has lots of different effects uh, health-wise. But also, you're moving both sides of your body. You're stimulating both sides of your brain. So, same as with uh, playing a piano. You're using left and right sides, you know, both, you know, both your hands. And, you know, for someone that maybe has a missing limb, use the other limb you know so um, obviously if someone's got a missing hand you can't do the ball thing but you can move your hand you can move your um, your feet so tap in your feet your right foot then your left foot your right foot then your left foot and you can imagine in fact what you could do is the equivalent of this what I'm going to do is first of all I'll show you how you can do it with your hands and then I'll show you how you can do it with your feet some people don't have the use of their hands some people don't have the use of their feet you know we're all, all different kinds of people so this gives you the option to do it so of whatever your situation is also if you can't physically do it for whatever reason you can imagine it because your imagination is just as powerful, actually it's more powerful than physically doing it. There's nothing more powerful than your imagination. It's the most powerful thing, the most powerful tool that you have. Anyway, we're gonna focus on the ball, which is gonna be a sock. Um, it could be a clean sock, I've got a clean sock, two clean socks here. But it doesn't matter. Anything that you can roll into a ball, or if you've got a handy a tennis ball or something like that. And all you're gonna do is just hold it in one hand. So I've got mine in my right hand, and I'm just I'm gonna imagine there's a line going down the middle of my body, all the way down uh, from the top of my head between my eyes, all the way down the middle of my chest, my stomach, and pretty much getting to my groin and then moving down to the floor. So both legs, arms are either side of the body, either side of that line. What all I'm gonna do is imagine it's like maybe a little net. And I'm gonna just chuck the ball, or the, the sock in this case, over the little net, the imaginary net, to the other hand and do it again and I'm doing this standing up but it might be easier to do it on the table because at least then if it falls you haven't got to pick it up off the floor but it's so all I'm doing and as you do it imagine it's moving over the little net but just focus move don't move your head just move your eyes so have your head, you can look down, obviously we don't have to do anything, but my suggestion is you, you can look down, sort of in the middle where the net would be. 
and you can see your hands um, you can see them in the peripheral but also you can see they're there anyway because they're not that far apart you don't have to have them spread right out you can have them as close as you want but just enough apart to be either side of that line and then just pass the ball or the sock to each hand that's it and just follow with your eyes as it goes either side and I just dropped it on the floor so that might be a good way good reason to do it whilst maybe sitting down and doing it over a table and that way you don't it doesn't fall on the floor however that's one part of the exercise that you can do the other part is you can do it with your feet and I'm going to do it with my feet now because it's on the floor and it saves me bending over and picking it up so I'm going to take my shoes off and the same way as before you've got that line down your body you move have it with your right foot you just kick it over to the left foot and then kick it over from the left foot to the right foot across that line so you're not trying to get it over, like over the a net or anything just passing it across the line to the other foot and you can do this sitting down as well it doesn't have to be standing up I mean the point with what I do I think it's very important actually is to make things comfortable because then you kind of want going to want to do it aren't you if, if, if something's really um, difficult if I'm going to start saying right now you need to get yourself a, a climbing frame and a parachute and you're going to like no 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 thanks you know, I'm just going to make it simple. So it's just moving, kicking it from one foot to the other. Or shunting it. It doesn't, it's not really a kick. It's just a moving it with your foot. Apart from anything else, it feels quite nice, the movement. And if you can, do it without any shoes on. If you can because then you've got you've got the feeling the floor underneath your feet and it does stimulate your, the bottoms of your feet a little bit and you get I don't know if it, it's really weird even though I'm on the first floor of a, of a building so I'm nowhere near the earth I feel almost kind of connected to the ground I know it is the ground but it's not the ground is it it's not you know in the garden but it still feels like there's a feels more connected than when I've got shoes on that might just be a personal thing but then when you're doing this you can move your toes and just just be gentle whatever you do just be gentle moving from one side to the other kicking that ball or that sock from your left foot over that little invisible line to your right foot and then again from your right foot over to your left foot or with your right hand just passing it over to the left hand and you know, even if the idea of like sort of uh, throwing it to the other hand doesn't feel, it might not feel very comfortable, it might not fit with your uh, a way of doing things, it might not be, you might think, oh, this is, this is, don't like it. You could just pass the ball and just drop it from your right hand down into your left hand 
and then put your right hand back where it was and then you could move your other left hand over to the right hand and just drop it into your right hand and move your left hand where it was and I'm just doing that actually and the movement feels really nice so in a way that is a different way of doing it but there's also more physical movement with your upper body because you do that your shoulders moving your hands are moving your arms are moving the muscles in your upper body are moving and even your hips are moving which in a sense may be even more stimulating to the other part of the brain even it out quicker so just give it a go give it a go there's nothing to lose worst case scenario it's it maybe it's a bit silly and it'll make you laugh and you'll be thinking what am I do what am I doing um, with this sock in my hand and that's it probably not something you can do in public maybe with a ball you know tennis ball maybe um, but probably I don't know taking us if you're at work and you pull a pull a sock out of your drawer <laughs> it might come across a little bit weird, weird or funny but you know what the humor of it can release tension just the idea of having all your work colleagues there and you pull out a dirty sock in a ball and you start passing it to your hands from one hand to the other and the looks on their faces like what on earth what are they doing that in itself can actually give you a little boost of um, calmness and relaxation even just thinking about doing something like that so I'll leave it with you I hope that it's useful and I'll speak to you again tomorrow so thank you for listening remember remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy lots of love Bye.